Hello there and welcome to this episode of Inside Southeastern Baseball with Head Coach Matt Reiser presented by your local Southern Quality Four Dealers and Buddy's Bar and Grill right here in Hammond. I'm Alan Waddell and joined as always by the head baseball coach of your Southeastern Lions, Coach Matt Reiser. And Coach, thanks for being here. Uh, this past week played a very tough schedule, four very quality opponents on your schedule, uh, four tough games. and. Some games we've seen your club win the last couple of years, some tight ones, just didn't go our way this week. We have a tough one go one and three. Yeah, we really do. Uh, we've lost four of our last five, uh, and three of those have been by, by one run. Right. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, <laughs> being close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. So uh, for us, uh, you know, I, I really, uh, early in the week, wasn't very happy the way we competed uh, at South Al. Wasn't very happy the way we competed Friday night at ULL. but. Uh, you can see the tide turn a little bit there on Saturday. Saturday, we thought we competed the right way. We thought Sunday we competed the right way. Unfortunately, uh, we, you know, we waited uh, till Saturday to do it, and, and so we end up with a one and three week um, and instead of the the three and one week we were looking for. Well, Matt, you know, we're going to have a chance to look at all these highlights. You go one and three, not what you wanted this week against UL Lafayette and South Alabama, but. Where do, you, where do you go from here? I mean, you still got a lot of baseball to be played. Can't, can't hang your head. You got some tough games this week. It's conference play back this weekend. Yeah, it is. Uh, and that's the good thing about baseball. Yep. You know, uh, to be honest with you, after Sunday's loss, uh, you know, we'll talk about it a little bit later, but um, I, I couldn't wait to get back out for Wednesday. You know, the, the fact that we got to wait till Wednesday uh, to play again uh, is just, it, it eats at me. I know it's eating at our guys because uh, those guys are so anxious to get back out there and compete again. All right, let's take a look at game one this week as the Lions went on the road to face the red-hot South Alabama Jaguars. The Lions open up their week over in Mobile, Alabama at uh, South Alabama to take on the Jaguars and get it started offensively early here, Coach. Yeah, you know, probably the way we came out, we, we faced Randy Bell again. We faced him earlier in the year and beat him at our place. And uh, I'll do a good job here early. Get two out knock, strike first. We get that first run there to go up uh, one nothing, And it felt like we were going to have some good at-bats there, but uh, hit some balls hard here the next couple of innings. You can see this one hit by Jameson Fisher. Just, I mean, just right there at the top of the wall. Maybe even robbed the home run there. Uh, hit a couple of balls hard early that didn't fall for us. Uh, and unfortunately allowed him to settle in. He really, really, you'll see here later in the ball game, settled in and pitched very, very well. Uh, Pat Cashman sent him back out. Uh, it actually was really good except for one inning. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, that one inning, they're going to get two runs here. You can see here in a second, they let off with a double here with a nine hole on the breaking ball down the line, and then their lefty comes up and slaps one the other way as well. Uh, and gonna score the guy from first base and take the lead two to one. And uh, you can see this gonna turn into one heck of a pitcher's duel the rest of the game. It certainly would. You don't really see many uh, midweek games that are pitched as well as this one was, but really very well pitched on both sides uh, here on Tuesday night. Yeah, and Randy Bell, again, just did a fantastic job of competing. Uh, really felt like, uh, as you can see, we hit one hard there to second baseman. This is one you don't see very often, Matt. A, a two to one game uh, in the midweek. Both pitchers were very well. Uh, got to run early. Just couldn't get it going there against the, the pitchers. He goes a complete game. Yeah, you know, we got Bell the first time at our place. Uh, he pitched well at our place. We finally got to him. And uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, his defense played very well the other night. We hit some balls hard early. Uh, got the run there in the first inning. Hit some balls well after that. They made some nice defensive plays. And then uh, he got real confident there late. He was probably uh, the best I've seen him there in that ninth inning. He could feel it. Uh, he's a true competitor and, and uh, could feel what was on the line for him and uh, pitched a heck of a ball game. You know, Pat Cashman pitched a heck of a ball game as well. Uh, unfortunately, one ball got down the line that scored two runs. So that was the difference in the ball game. All right, let's take our first break. We come back. We'll take a look at the highlights as the Lions played UL Lafayette on the weekend right here on Inside Southeastern Baseball with head coach Matt Reiser presented by your local Southern Quality Four Dealers and Buddy's Bar and Grill. Stay with us. Welcome to Buddy's Bar and Grill, located at 1236 South Morrison Boulevard in Hammond. Buddy's is home to great steaks, fresh seafood, and friendly service. Buddy's has been voted the best steakhouse and best restaurant in Tangipahoa Parish. With over 2,500 square feet and three large dining rooms, Buddy's can accommodate any party. Buddy's goal has always been to wow customers with their food and prices. Owner Scott Henderson and his family have always believed in giving customers good deals for their hard-earned money. Stop by Buddy's Bar and Grill for dinner and a drink. For more information on Buddy's, please visit buddyshammond.com. This is the time. This is Ford Truck Month. Let me hear you say truck. Yeah, let's crank it on up. 
Ford F-Series is America's best-selling truck. And with over 25 million sold in the past 39 years, no wonder it's the number one choice in the hardest working industries out there. This is the place. This is Ford Truck Month. Now get 0% financing for 60 months plus $2,000 cash back on F-150. Truck, yeah! Welcome back to Inside Southeastern Baseball with head coach Matt Reiser, presented by your local Southern Quality Ford dealers and Buddy's Bar and Grill right here in Hammond. And Matt, uh, we're going to take a look at the highlights from the weekend as you take on UL Lafayette. And I know that you were excited about getting the Raging Cajuns on the schedule. Uh, Friday night, you go down there to Lafayette, you play in a, a great atmosphere. And I know your aspirations for this program, and that's to you know win regionals, win super regionals, and, and have a chance to get to Omaha. And, you're going to have to win in atmospheres like that on Friday night. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, you know, you got to tip your hat to the ULL crew and, and what they did. Uh, it is, it's a serious production they put on down there. Uh, they, are, they are rowdy. They, they enjoy it. Uh, they're supportive, uh, good people. They cook good food. We got some good food after the ball game. Unfortunately, it was after a loss for us. Uh, but I tell you, that was probably one of the best atmospheres in college baseball I've been in in a long time. All right, well, let's go back out on Saturday as the Raging Cajuns would come here to Hammond and the Lions would look to rebound. Matt, looking to bounce back here on Saturday. Uh, it was Super Lion Saturday, big crowd on hand, second biggest crowd of the year uh, as the Raging Cajuns came to town. And Max Roller was on the mound, and he was certainly good and gave you the start you needed. Yep, JD3 got things started for us there that first pitch. Uh, got it out right, and Max Roller just took right after JD3, comes in there, pumps in the strikes, and uh, had some trouble here early, but does a good job of working his way out of it. Uh, you can see he makes a big pitch there, three hole hitter there, Clements gets the strike out. There's another punch out there. Tross Claire uh, was one of the leading hitters last year as well. And uh, really clicked on all cylinders. You know, proud of the way we bounced back uh, Saturday after uh, Friday's debacle of the one hit. Uh, we, we, I guess, a little confident offensively here, as you're going to see uh, here in a moment. Uh, we really started opening some things up. The big thing was to get on them early. Uh, we get a couple guys on base there, get second and third, and uh, this is what we've been kind of missing. And, uh, Carson Kreitz uh, has been feeling it lately. Also, you can see the big uh, two-run double here to deep center field. Two outs as well. Two outs, yeah. Get some big knock that we needed uh, to jump on those guys early and get that 2 nothing lead. It was certainly big to get the crowd involved early on. Uh, like you said, you know, on, on Tuesday night against South Alabama, on Friday against UL, uh, offensively just uh, couldn't get things clicking, but it was nice to get it going here early and get some confidence. It, yeah, it really was. And, you know, when anytime you face a uh, weekend rotation like ULL has, you, you got to get those guys early. Uh, once they settle in, they're, they're pretty daggone hard to hit. Uh, so you got to make sure you jump on them early, and, uh, we, and we did. And the good thing was, uh, Matt continued to go out there. We talked about it beforehand. The, the key to them scoring runs is going to be free passes. Uh, you see Sinsley hit one off the wall there. Byers did a great job playing off the wall, keeps it as a single. Uh, and we get the punch out there to get out of uh, the inning and uh, get some things going here later in the ball game. One thing that was impressive in this game as well is your ability to just continue to add on. It just seemed like you never had enough and just kept making big play after big play offensively. Yeah, and really felt like this was a big moment in the ball game. Uh, again, uh, two outs, nobody on base. We, we get the walk, we're still second. Midiette comes up with a big two out knock there to right field and scores a run and uh, really just kept that pressure on, on their uh, defense. I think that was the biggest part of this. We never let them get settled in offensively, uh, never let them get settled in defensively. Uh, and really just kind of whooped it in every phase possible on, on Saturday. This was a big play as well here. They had a kind of a mess up offensively on the base pass. They had nobody out at this point and, and were able to uh, kind of run themselves out of the inning here. Yep, yeah, and a great job the way we handled it here. Uh, they didn't get the sign of second base from the hit and run, so they have two guys there. Uh, the guy goes back to second, we do a good job back picking the back guy and, and kind of slowing some things down there. Uh, it was a huge out in the inning uh, to allow Mac to get back to routine and obviously you see the routine out there right uh, center field by Suru, but uh, really big moment there that we handled defensively extremely well to allow us to go back to work offensively. See Carson Kreitz, even his outs were hard outs as well. This was really a big blow early in the game, and this ball was absolutely murdered to left field. Big three-run homer. Yeah, you know, and again, uh, it was about keeping the pressure on. Uh, Ryan Byers had a, a fantastic at bat going, had a really bad call on him earlier in this at bat, uh, and did a fantastic job of handling the moment. 
Uh, got him down with two strikes. He, he didn't complain about it. He didn't worry about it. He knew he just had to keep competing. And uh, obviously he comes through, gets it all the way back to a full count, and hits a three-run bomb there. And uh, even Tony said in his post-game interview, he thought this was the point in the game that, that kind of turned things uh, south for them that they didn't feel like they could bounce back from. Max Scroller goes back out there again. And, and this uh, guy made some great plays in the field. He really did. Uh, you know, again, we talked about it. Yeah, we hit. Yeah, we pitched. But uh, the defense we played as well was just uh, extremely impressive, especially that man in center field. And, you know, Seward struggled a little bit offensively, but that's why you can't take him out a lot of. Uh, the plays he makes out in center field, the runs he saves are, are huge. And I also saw the one diving play there. He made another diving play later in the ball game. It was uh, – Really important at the time of the game because had the base load and nobody out, um, you know, and just what he does defensively and brings to the table defensively, you can't take him out of the lineup. Mag just seemed to pitch out of trouble all night. You know, he, he'd get himself into a little trouble, but he would pitch out of jams and make big pitches when he needed. Fisher leads off here with a home run, first pitch of the inning. As I didn't know if he quite got all of this one, Mag, but he got over the wall to opposite field, his ninth home run of the year. as. Uh, another week for Jamison Fisher as he leads the nation in batting average. Yeah, you know, really proud of this young man. Um, you know, they threw a punch here in the top half of the end and hit a solo home run, made it 6-1. to one. Maybe he got some momentum going their way, uh, but if there was any momentum at all going their way, obviously Jamison Fisher took it right back. First pitch from the reliever, takes it off the field, uh, showing off the, the big-time power he had to go off the field there and make it 7-1. to one. You really beat up their bullpen in this game as well. As it didn't matter, it seemed like who they brought in. It seemed like you were able to score. Uh, and this one is uh, another soft contact there. Matt gets and big moment here. He brought Cliff Hurst in the ball game, and uh, it's now 7-3. Had a chance to, to do some more damage here, get a little bit closer. Cliff does a good job of coming in, and getting the ground out there. Brennan Bro makes a big time play, and uh, you know the way it works. You make a big play defensively, you come up with a, uh, a nice play offensively. You run the hit and run here. Does a fantastic job of executing it, and again the pressure just stays on. Uh, you know, run the bases the way we did. Uh, again, another phase I thought we, we absolutely dominated in as well all weekend, really. Uh, Seward here, you know, that's the second out there with Midget swinging. Uh, push the pressure on the catcher, comes sliding in, gets the run. They walk Fisher. Uh, we steal second base, and, and then another two out knock by Carson Price. Uh, really pissed this thing out of reach of 10 3. And you know, you go back to Midget, even though a strikeout, some kids will maybe pallet, but he runs it out the first base and creates something there offensively. No doubt. And Peyton Roberts did it, came in and did an absolutely, absolutely outstanding job out of the pen. He really did. Uh, really proud of that young man. Blew right through one of their top hitters uh, in three pitches. Joe Robbins, who's been seeing as good as anybody in the country, uh, did a good job coming in and getting him a strikeout. And then uh, also we go back to work offensively. It was good to see Taylor Swan finally go the other way hard. It's been a couple of weeks since he's gone that way. And uh, he struggled a little bit offensively because of it. And he did a good job this week working, trying to go back to that backside. And he gets a two-run triple there uh, to right field, driving the ball the other way. Certainly was big hit there. As uh, also Ryan Byers comes up here, his second home run of the game, and this ball was absolutely crushed as well to the opposite field. And this was kind of uh, the exclamation point, so to speak. Yeah, by this point it was uh, it was obviously all over, and uh, but just uh, made a sense that you know obviously hey tomorrow we know this game's over with, uh, but tomorrow we're going to be there as well. Sunday's going to be a battle uh, for the ages, so to speak. Lions win this one. Uh, at home in front of a big crowd, a nice way to bounce back against a very good UL Lafayette team here. Well, that's certainly a way to respond after dropping game one against the Raging Cajuns. You blow them out there on Saturday, 16-5 to offensively, just some huge numbers. Yeah, you know, we talked about when you struggle, uh, you got to get back to square one sometimes. Remember what made you successful to begin with. And uh, I thought there's some things that have been kind of going to the side a little bit. You know, I, I don't think we're playing as hard as, uh, as we possibly could the last couple games. and. Uh, we talked about it Saturday before the ball game. Just, you know, whatever happens, regardless, fly around the ball field, make sure you enjoy it, make sure you appreciate it. Uh, and obviously, I think we took out a little bit of constipation there offensively. It had been a little while since we scored some runs, and uh, boy, did we show up and respond really, really well on Saturday. Probably the way we responded. Uh, the three-game losing streak, longest losing streak yep. we've had in two years, uh, and they didn't hang their heads. They came out with full force and full fight uh, to show those guys and get us back in the series. All right, well, let's go back out and look at the highlights on Sunday, the rubber match between the Lions and the Cajuns. Here's Sunday. This is a national champion, Alex Young, from a, the track and field team, a tremendous athlete, student athlete for Southeastern. Has, uh, 
that's national champion all levels. So a uh, great job uh, and nice to see him out there throwing out that first pitch. Yeah, it really was. And then uh, obviously we get the start here with Dominic Carlini. Uh, knew going into Sunday it was going to be a battle. They had their pin fresh. They had their uh, best ERA guy going on the, on the weekend, was going on Sunday. and. Uh, knew this would come down to, to some big moments. Uh, Dom gets off, started off the right way, does a good job of uh, making some good pitches, and then also we get a good defensive play there by Seward again out in center field. Allows this offense to go to work early. Uh, you know, here's where Brent Bro brings so much to the table in that leadoff spot. Uh, you know, he hits a little chopper in the infield. You know, looks like a routine out, uh, but with his speed, he ends up beating out for a single and allows this offense to go a little bit early. See him trying to pound Fisher in there. They miss and get the HBP. He does a good job of taking it, hustling down the first base there. And uh, again, the same story set up uh, on Sunday. You know, we had to strike early, had to strike fast. And uh, again, another big two out knock here in the first inning uh, to score the two runs that, that makes it two nothing and uh, gets us going in the right direction there offensively. It certainly was. Is it almost a mirror to Saturday jumping out with two runs in the first inning? Is uh, Carlini was on the mound. You felt pretty good. He's been so good all year. As uh, he, he made some pitches when he had to, kind of similar to Mac the day before. Got in some trouble, but seemed to get out of it every time. Yep, you know, really did a good job of just dominating the zone until late uh, when he did get himself in trouble. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, you'll see here uh, in a little bit, he, he lost the zone. Uh, but, you know, really proud of the way the guys competed. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, nothing was throwing free passes. Uh, you see us turn a nice 6 4 3 play. This is one of those moments we're talking about. Had a chance to be in trouble through one strike in the inning. Uh, gets two, two outs off the one strike he does throw there with the double play. And then uh, we'll snag this one down in the corner as well to make the third out. You know, really had a big moment in the second inning. We didn't see. Uh, had a chance to extend that lead in the second. On a push bump, we couldn't get down, unfortunately. Uh, so it stays 2 0. Carlini does a good job of keeping it 2 0. And then you'll see Carson Kreitz here. Uh, momentarily come up again with another yeah, big goal. knock and really thought this was a, 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 a turning point in the game as well. Really thought it uh, kind of got us going in the right direction. He'd lead kind of settled in a little bit, making some nice pitches, had a couple punch outs there going, was kind of rolling. And then uh, obviously uh, Carson throws a big solo shot here in the bottom of the fifth. And Matt, it was kind of a weird sit feeling in the stadium. You know, it just kind of felt very comfortable at this point. You know, 3 nothing lead and they would have the big inning and take the lead five to three in this one. And but at this point, it just seemed like you know, hey, we got this. Yeah, you know, and that's that's why you play nine innings of baseball. Uh, really felt like on this day we won eight and a half innings of baseball on that day. And uh, unfortunately, it's you know you got to play nine, and we didn't play nine. Uh, you see, K. Grande, you know, this will probably be one of the biggest mistakes I've made in my early career is not bring him earlier. Uh, we had the lead, and they didn't bring him in. I didn't trust him early. Uh, enough, you know, was trying to wait a little bit longer to keep him fresh for the entire uh, end of the ball game, and uh, he pitched extremely, extremely well. Kept us right there at five three uh, ball game. Where, and again, we talked about the way we competed. Uh, we got second, and third here, one out. Uh, time runs at second base. We get the sack fly to make it five four. Uh, Grandier continues to dominate their hitters and does a fantastic job of uh, spinning that breaking ball, keeping them uh, off balance, and, and really had no hard contact off of them in three and the third innings. Certainly a tough way to, to end the weekend. You know, I, UL Lafayette's a team that's in the top 15 on RPI, and I think anybody that walked away from this series, Matt, these are two very evenly matched ball clubs. Just, you know, maybe one or two plays away from winning that game on Sunday. Yeah, it is. You know, uh, you got to tip your hat to that bunch. Uh, we didn't give them anything. They, they earned everything in that that's five run, six inning. Uh, I don't think there was maybe but one walk in the entire inning. Everything else was, was hits. And, uh, you know, uh, again, just a hard fought battle. Uh, it, it will. Go down was probably one of my biggest mistakes I made in my early coaching career. I uh, should have gone straight to, to Grigne, a, a pick Cashman in the position. He hasn't been in all year trying to come out of the bullpen to, to get to Grigne, uh, and so so be it. It is what it is. We got to learn from it, move on from it. Uh, but again, just really proud of the way the guys competed, and, and that was kind of my message after the game. Uh, nothing to hang your head about. Uh, you competed the right way the last two days. You keep competing like this. You're going to have success when we we'll get that ultimate goal of what we want uh, in the multiple championships. All right, let's go ahead and take a break. We come back, we'll take a look at our Lion Profile of the Week and uh, look at some the games coming up this weekend right here on Inside Southeastern Baseball with head coach Matt Riser, presented by your local Southern Quality Four Dealers and Buddy's Bar and Grill. 
Baseball is supported by Louisiana's First Choice Auto Auction, located in SLU's hometown, Hammond, Louisiana. Louisiana's First Choice Auto Auction is a dealer-only auction. For more information on Louisiana First Choice Auto Auction or their upcoming charity golf tournament, please visit www.lafcaa.com or visit Louisiana First Choice Auto Auction on Facebook and Twitter. Your eyesight is so important, and when it comes to your eye care, let the friendly staff at the Bond Roden Eye Clinic care for you. Doctors Hunter Bond and Chris Roten, along with their staff of trained doctors, are committed to providing every patient with quality care. The Bond Roten Eye Clinic has the latest medical technology and eye care to help you, the patient. With over 14 years of experience, the Bond Roten Eye Clinic has three locations to serve you with offices in Denham Springs, Hammond, and Amite. So if it's a checkup, glasses, or LASIK surgery, you need to visit the Bond Roten Eye Clinic. For more information on the clinic, please visit bondroteniclinic.com. Welcome back to Inside Southeastern Baseball with head coach Matt Reiser, presented by your local Southern Quality Four Dealers and Buddy's Barn Grill. It's now time to take a look at our Lion profile, and this week we're going to profile junior outfielder Ryan Byers. In late 2012, Ryan Byers, like all college students, had to decide where he wanted to attend school and play baseball. The then Ponchatoula senior knew he wanted to attend Southeastern, and it had everything to do with family. Really, it just, like, it just felt like it was just home to me. And I, I like being near my family and near my parents and everything. And I really just didn't want to get away from here. I love Hammond. And it's just it's got a good hometown vibe that I just didn't want to get away from. Byers redshirted his first year in Hammond and played in a few games his redshirt freshman season. But it was the 2015 year that saw Ryan emerge as a major contributor for the Lions. Ryan appeared in 58 games, starting 50. And he hit 290 with eight doubles, a triple, four home runs, and 44 runs batted in. The RBI total was second in the Southland Conference behind his own teammate, Daniel Midyet. But winning a regular season title and that accompanying ring was what was important to Ryan. I think this team's the hungriest it's ever been because I guess we can all see our potential and we can see what's right in front of us. And I think everybody just wants to have that same feeling like we had last year and be successful. Grades are also important to Byers as he's been named to the Southland Conference Academic Honor Roll twice while at Southeastern. Yeah, academics are really a lot to me. Like, I always have, I always have a certain day where I always do, get all my homework done, make sure I have all my assignments due for all my online classes. I always just try to stay like, basically the, like I play on the field, I always try to stay a step ahead. Byers has been working on finding his spot this season while splitting time in the outfield with sophomore Drew Avens. This past Saturday, Ryan discovered that right field was to his liking, going deep twice and driving in five runs. Being able to contribute to this team is a really big important role for me. I, I love, like, I gotta give credit to all my teammates. They were all on base. They all had good at bats before me. And just whenever my time came up, I just came up and decided, like, I had to deliver. I felt like I just needed to deliver for my teammates. The Lions have a team symbol that they all rally around. It's the team shovel, and it goes to the MVP of each win. Ryan leads a team with three shovels. I think it would be once you, if you're down and you don't think you can ever get back up, you can always dig yourself out of a grave. You can always find a way. You can always find a way to be successful. And you just have to go back to what made you successful. And you just have to dig yourself out. For now, Byers will continue to focus on his schoolwork and baseball. And with five baseball weekends left, Byers, like most Lions, is not focused on anything but the very next game. Matt, we just took a look at Ryan Byers. Obviously had a big game on Saturday night. We saw that in the highlights earlier. Yeah, proud of that young man. You know, uh, a year ago, all-conference player. Uh, had, had Was starting there for a good bit of the first portion of the year. Uh, had been kind of quiet here as late, but you know, obviously, you know, he's heating back up, and you can see that. He got plugged back in that lineup, and Bubba, he didn't look back. Uh, had suckers had a, had a big night there on Saturday. Uh, had a nice game there on Sunday as well. Had some big at-bats there as well. So. Uh, could be more proud of that young man. He's obviously had a great career for us, uh, but going to have, have been a bigger end of the year and obviously senior year as well. All right, Matt, let's take a look at these Southland Conference standings. I know you were disappointed the way the week went this week, but now you're right back in conference play. And as you can see from the standings, there's some teams that are nipping on your heels. You're in first place. Sam Houston State right behind you in second. Uh, and then Lamar, uh, McNeese, your opponent this week, is right there on the outside looking in. So we got a, these last five conference weekends are certainly going to be huge. It really is. You know, people keep talking about the RPI. And uh, again, I just explained to them, look, it's still early. Uh, there's still five weekends left. And if you look at that schedule, uh, five of those uh, or three of those five opponents on the weekend 
uh, or, or top 60 RPI. So the RPI is going to go up from that standpoint. Now it's up to us to take care of business, and we can't look at the last weekend or the next last weekend. we got to look at what's down to shoot, which is McNeese. Uh, you talk about a club that's feeling really good about themselves right now. They're pitching extremely well right now. Uh, the Fontenot kid on Friday night just had his shutout. Uh, streak broken uh, last week. He'd gone three games, I think three shots in a row or something like that. So uh, it's a confident bunch. They beat LSU midweek last week. Uh, feeling good about what they're doing. So we'll have our hands full on the road this weekend with McNeese. All right, let's take a final break. When we come back, we're going to talk more about the McNeese State Cowboys right here on Inside Southeastern Baseball with head coach Matt Reiser presented by your local Southern Quality Four Dealers and Buddy's Barn Grill. Welcome to Buddy's Bar and Grill, located at 1236 South Morrison Boulevard in Hammond. Buddy's is home to great steaks, fresh seafood, and friendly service. Buddy's has been voted the best steakhouse and best restaurant in Tangipahoa Parish. With over 2,500 square feet and three large dining rooms, Buddy's can accommodate any party. Buddy's goal has always been to wow customers with their food and prices. Owner Scott Henderson and his family have always believed in giving customers good deals for their hard-earned money. Stop by Buddy's Bar and Grill for dinner and a drink. For more information on Buddy's, please visit buddyshammond.com. This is the time. This is Ford Truck Month. Let me hear you say truck. Yeah, let's crank it on up. Yeah. Ford F-Series is America's best-selling truck. And with over 25 million sold in the past 39 years, no wonder it's the number one choice in the hardest working industries out there. This is the place. This is Ford Truck Month. Now get 0% financing for 60 months plus $2,000 cash back on F-150. Truck, yeah! All right, welcome back to Inside Southeastern Baseball with head coach Matt Reiser, presented by your local Southern Quality Ford dealers and Buddy's Bar and Grill right here in Hammond. And Matt, uh, we're at the point of the schedule. We have five conference weekends left. It's kind of hard to believe only one midweek game remaining. So mostly conference from here on out. This weekend, you're going to go on the road and take on really a red-hot McNeese team. They took two out of three this past week from Lamar, and they beat LSU in the midweek uh, last week. Uh, they're coached by Justin Hill, who was formerly on this staff. I know you know him very well. The Friday game will be televised by Cox Sports Television and also on ESPN3. So ought to be a great atmosphere for baseball over there in Lake Charles. And, uh, you know, I know our fans like taking on McNeese. Uh, yeah, we do. You know, it's a good in-state opponent, good in-state rival. And, uh, you know, Friday night, again, is going to be another showdown. Yep. you got Kyle Setatal and their guy going Fontenot, uh, two of the best in the conference, if not the two best in the conference from that standpoint. So, uh, you know, it, it'll be a fun weekend. It'll be good to see uh, Jay Hill again. Uh, it's been a little while since I've seen him and, and to see his little girls. And uh, he'll get a chance to see X-Man. The family's coming over. So uh, outside the baseball field, it'll be nice to see him. But uh, obviously on the field, I think it's going to be making for a great weekend to really compete. I think their RPI is in the 50s, or is right in the high 50s, low 60s as well. So uh, if you look at it on paper, everything's pretty even and should really make for a nice weekend. Well, there you have it. That's the head coach of your Southeastern Lions, Matt Reiser. I'm Alan Waddell. That's going to do it for us. Thank you so much. We'll see you next week.